Thank you for clicking play. This is the PK Comic Book 411, and uh, this is where we don't do any reviews or opinions as much as I can, as well as associations, info, compare, and contrast. Like I uh, told you in my last vlog, I am trying to catch up. And this is the one for DC, Detective Comics. One of the big two. We have Marvel and DC, and then we have the other publishers. And of that, I would say that Image is by far the top one of the other publishers. But this is Detective Comics, so as opposed to Captain America, Iron Man, etc., we have Superman and Batman, Aquaman, Justice League, instead of the Avengers. I wanted to let you guys know that I figured out how far back this catch-up is from, and it's from March. Now, how do I know that? Something that Marvel doesn't do, DC actually puts the month on the UPC. That really helps. It also helps when there's annuals because I never know, as, I, as you may know, never know whether to put the annuals like within the storyline or do I put them in the front and I've gotten uh, advice going both ways. But now I actually put it like if it's a, after issue 20, I'll put it 20.5, you know, and I'll write that on the actual sleeve or the bag. Usually I do events, then I do group titles, and then I do uh, single person titles. And I'm going to switch that because DC actually went to a weekly publishing. It worked. In a business sense, it worked. You can see on previews the number of uh, titles they sold. You had to keep up on the story. Otherwise, they'd back up quite quickly. But uh, instead of that order, I am going to do group titles, then single titles, and then the event. Now we're going to start off with Secret Origins. Um, it's sort of funny. We, we know that Marvel and DC are going to reboot very soon and DC is doing this uh, in real life they're moving from New York to Los Angeles where Marvel has done that a long time ago and it has to do with quite honestly major motion pictures and they need to be in you know West Coast Hollywood type thing same time zone I don't know all right we need to start going and we're gonna go fast all right a little uh, Easter egg here Charles Sewell Soul, who also uh, writes for Marvel in a very big way in terms of Inhumans and Inhumanity, saving it from Matt Fraction, etc. He does Swamp Thing here, and that's Alec Holland. Um, and uh, you also have Unsolved Mysteries, and that's written by Paul Levitz. And it, you think it's an origin story of Supergirl, ends up to be Power Girl, but the black Power Girl from Teen Titans. So it gives you the background of how they went to Earth 2 and came back and uh, have the Huntress and World's Finest. There's actually a tie-in here to Superman Cross Worlds, which is this one right here. Uh, right here. Wonderful art. And we'll get to that a little bit later um, by uh, Jay Lee. Um, and there's also another tie-in to World's Finest number 32. And then you have the origin of the Black Green Lantern, as it happens, is, is uh, John Stewart in this Secret Origins. Again, the running joke is that it's all going to go away anyway. I mean, because they're going to reboot. But I'm a noobler, man. I need to know the origins. Just even if it's like a yesteryear story, I, I need to know at least one of the origins, even if they're going to reboot. They, they sort of revamp the same origins anyway with a little bit of a twist. All right, so Batgirl, Commissioner Gordon's daughter is Barbara, and I guess they call her Babs. Francine Charles is her friend in this, and they say she has muscular dystrophy, and you better be careful, because my brother has Becker's muscular dystrophy, and that is on the X chromosome, and if you have a female, it's an XX, and usually that X doesn't allow the other one to mutate. So, there may be female people with muscular dystrophy, but it's probably going to be Duchenne's and that's an infancy, infant type of disease and they're not going to be in a wheelchair as in this uh, as in this comic. So the ending was derailed anyway, but you better be careful, do your homework if you're a writer, if you start talking about diseases. All right, I can wave my hand at that. No ranting. Firestorm, a really big firestorm. Ronnie, Raymer, Ronnie Raymond and Jason Rush or Roosh. I would say Roosh, but the TV show is saying Rush. Um, that is The Flash that's saying the Rush as the metahuman. And that was actually written by Dan Jurgens, a very big uh, name, and it doesn't say any of this. So that's a little Easter egg for you. And the last one is uh, Poison Ivy, the Pamela Eilly story. And it's pretty funny because they have Descanto, which is really Monsanto in real life about GMOs and stuff. Interesting. Um, now, Ray Fox, he's an up-and-coming writer. Let me tell you, Ray Fox has done a lot of ancillary stuff, and uh, he Canadian writer. We're going to see a lot of them. 
So Ray Fox is uh, writing up with Constantine um, with nods to the TV show, which sort of sucks because I think it was ABC or CBS, primetime, um, Friday night, network channel, didn't have a chance. It was actually one of the better ones um, versus The Flash and uh, what's the uh, soap opera with hoodies. Um, oh yeah, The Arrow. No, I'm just kidding. They, they really did an awesome job um, leading up to the season finale. Um, soap opera with hoodies. And then the next one is Guy Gardner. He has the classic middle child syndrome and the pompous one, at least in the animated series. And then, well, Red Lantern. And it sort of explains it, the, the classic middle child syndrome. Lastly, we have The Canary, uh, written by uh, Christy Marks, a fellow game designer, if I might add. Works at Zynga right now. Suicide Squad number seven. There's some sort of Chinese Superman. Harley leaves a reverse flash to die. Amanda admits that he volunteered for it. You can tell that... Ryan knows that by this, it's all going to go away. He's like trying to button it up. And Suicide Squad, by the way, are like the villains with the bomb in your head. So much like Valiant Hardcore. I should really figure out whether the Valiant Hardcore, Bloodshot as well, um, has the bomb in his head prior, the idea prior to Suicide Squad. I doubt it. I'm sure Valiant copied DC. Pretty much all these titles are trying to wrap it up before this big uh, reboot. Aquaman and the others. I'm pretty new to the others, but I really like the cast, and I like how they have that Atlantean artifacts. I'm going to show you those right here that they have, you know, that's Prisoner with the Atlantean artifact, Vostok up there with the Atlantean uh, artifact. They had to button it up because of the Convergence, and I'll get to the Convergence in a second. But they still have a couple of pearls, and in this one, and I don't, I think this is the last issue. In this one, there's, there's a nuke that's fired. And they're like, oh, well, if they fire a nuke without a, a target, it'll probably land in some ocean, you know, harmlessly, you know, deton detonating. <laughs> and look at the title. So you have Mira Hawkman just, uh, yeah, there's nowhere on an ocean that anything could detonate harmlessly. You dick. All right, into Aquaman. He finally gets over to the mother's zone. This is his mom, and his mom goes, I don't believe you. You can tell that the uh, inker, Paul Pelletier, is really uh, putting some time in. Probably because this is the last issue. And then, oh, we have one more. That's the movie title, The Free Willy. So it's a bittersweet ending on this. And I would think that this is, yeah, number 40, maybe. Now, there are some titles that they're going to keep on going with. And I believe Justice League is one of them. Possibly Aquaman. For an issue four, it's very, very dense. You have his son, Jericho, and then you have his father, that's like the villain. There's Red Fury, that's either the sister, yeah, it's the sister. So I don't know if everyone knows of these names, but just in this one, number four, I have to learn about this whole family lineage of Slade Wilson, which is uh, Deathstroke. The last page is just an awesome splash page, a double splash page and i would have dropped this from a pull list even though it's ending but that is some sweet splashiness so now i want to have five and read six and it's probably going to be over anyway grayson i'm really a fan of grayson because of the um second writer which is tom king not to be confused with jeff king and that'll come up later uh there's a really cool part that he's going over all the justice league uh weaknesses going one by one i'm enjoying reading it um i would have dropped it but then again this is a variant cover, so it has nothing to do with what's in here, which makes it very hard for me to remember what was in that. And there may be a number eight. I'm not too sure. I think number seven may be the end. Now, as they're buttoning up everything, there is one particular issue in the story arc that I thought really, really did well. And usually I find Greg Pak stuff. He does uh, Eternal Warrior and Valiant. Um, and he did Superman uh, Doomed. Which I haven't read. Should I read that? Because there's a lot of allusions to it that, you know, I think, oh, I should, probably should have read that. No spoilers. There's unerring bullets in this. And what he thought of for unerring bullets is fantastic. I'm pretty sure this is a historical story about Candor. He takes the uh, Brainiac, takes the Candor, which is a city on uh, Krypton, shrinks it down. But this is a pretty big story. He, he explains about suspended animation, the yellow sun. So it's a very succinct story though. Um, evil mastermind, his ploys, the tough spots. Um, and there's uh, three of our heroes. We have Supergirl in this one as well. You see her up there. What movie is this? It's killing me. Fast and the Furious? I don't know. It's killing me. Notice how I have 20 up here. And I have that because the next one is an annual 20.5. But DC uses the month so that I actually know that May I can compare it to the other UPCs. Therefore, Marvel can't do that because they don't put the months. Because there's no number on here. Huh. 
So that's why I put number 20 on here. Otherwise, I'd have to look at all the EPCs and fiber May 2015 is. Art is fabulous in uh, Batman Superman. Not so in Superman, which is this one, and apparently it was going to be just wonderful. He takes the Jeff Johns change of power, because now he has a new power. I'll explain it in a second. Superman has a new power. Um, but the thing I really like about this title, where you have Batman there, when Superman does use his new power of a solar flare and he has no energy for the next 24 hours and he's basically human, Batman shines. And that's really, really cool. It's such a video game type of thing that, you know, you use your big power and then you have a cool down. And you have to wait until you can use the big power again. That's pretty much what they put into Superman. Moving on, you have Ulysses fighting Superman and you tricked me into killing my world and this is the issue and that's why I only have one Superman it's number 38 where he gets um, his his new superpower that's gonna carry over after the whole reboot alright so check this out it's an OGN original graphic novel this one is uh, 1999 and I know about Straczynski JM Straczynski by uh, randomly picking up, I think it's Dynamite's Twilight Zone. And it's fabulous writing. Fabulous, fabulous. But the title is awful and has nothing to do with Twilight Zone, really. And it just didn't do well, as far as I know. But he has a different take. Earth One is pretty much like a Marvel Ultimate. Just let's have a whole different storyline, different planet, okay? Um, universe to talk about characters that we already know about, and it's disconjunct from all the other stuff going on. That's some good stuff, right? And it takes it as a kid, it's very emo, he's wearing the hoodie, Lois Lane, he's definitely like, wait a minute, you're not who you say you are, and he has a girlfriend, oh god, I forgot her name, I have it written down here, um, Lisa LaSalle, I think, Lisa LaSalle. Who is a hooker, and he almost had sex for the first time, and Shuskinski even has the conversation between his dad and him about having sex, because we've had that conversation, people. Everyone's talked about that. All right, um, this one is about Bohica. All right, see that plane right there? That's bend over. Here comes another. Yes, here it comes again. Bohica, which is uh, Air Force slang. I like it when I learn things. I think that's hilarious. I hope. Lisa LaSalle. There she is. That is the new s girlfriend, if you will, neighbor, girl next door, of uh, Superman in Earth, it's Straczynski's Earth One. Yeah, so this has no one, this has a two. Thank you, DC. Um, I wanted to just show you one on here. Do you see that? The one thing that they changed is that um, there's a sentient ship that brought him there and that the actual metal can be sort of molecularized and it sort of came into play when this new villain Tyrell came in and the difference in the mythos is that there's two warring factions uh, around Krypton and they got close enough and they would fight then they go around and then they come close enough in the fight so then they finally like destroyed Krypton so it was actually a, a war that was happening and they wanted to kill the final Kryptonian so that's why Tyrell finally found uh, Superman after 20 years now let's have a laugh. <laughs> Linda Carter, 1977. I was five years old. To be honest, I used to twirl around, man. I loved it. Oh my God, it's just so fun. It's probably my first time I said, nostalgia, let me buy it. Um, yeah, there's two stories. One's all disco, like Studio 54, but they call it Studio 52 because everything in DC is 52. But the greatest thing for me is that she uses the tiara, tiara, the crown thing. Hitting all of the uh, guns. Love it. Um, that usually doesn't happen in other titles. All right, Justice League. I'm going to have to say that this Justice League, just with Jeff Johns, is sort of what's happening in the DC Universe right now. All the other stuff can do whatever ever they want, but this is the mainstay. And they're ending up the story arc, and that's when Lex Luthor made the Amazovirus that takes superhero powers away from the superhumans and gives superhuman powers to the normal human. So, you have Batman gaining powers. This is the one, I think, this is the last one before Convergence and all that starts. Actually, this one is continued in Divergence, which is a free comic book day. But the first three pages, it just, it's, it, you can tell it's timeless, and it's going to be the beginning of some, you know, trade. It's 
very good. It's Metron talking to the anti-monitor. Anti-monitor's like, hey, you're, you're in my Mobius chair. And Metron's like, thanks. <laughs> but there's like an anthology of 50 years, certainly several decades. It's, I would say this is a must read, even though I haven't been reading for 50 years. Um, yeah, it's, it's just... Jeff Johns is saying we can't continue to do the multiverse and then one Earth, and then multiverse and then one Earth. So they're going to call it convergence and divergence. Um, but they've done it so many times that you're sort of wearing out the fabric. And I, and I like that Jeff Johns is sort of saying we can't do it anymore. However, I've heard through the grapevine that's all because of major motion picture. House is saying you need to figure out one world so we can have movies about it. Two, two or three movies couldn't explain all of the DC history, right? Very big opening letter in this one. Talks about moving from uh, New York to uh, Los, uh, I don't know if it's Los Angeles. I think. Say, okay, now there's three main things that are going to happen, all right? First thing is that Lois Lane ratted out Clark Kent as Superman. And Superman's like, just, I'm done, hoodie, I'm out, okay? That's number one. The other one is that the Batman is this Donnie Darko Robocop. So it's no longer Bruce or Thomas like in Earth 2. It is Robocop. I, I actually, I forget his name. Guy. It can't be Guy. Kim, Jet. I don't know. But that Robocop thing you're seeing there with the uh, Donnie Darko ears, that is the new Batman. He's part of the GCPD, Gotham City Police Department. Um, and this is continued from Justice League 40, like I said, and it's, it's sort of the new mythos of Wonder Woman as well, that she was born out of clay, but that's sort of a joke, and now she has a sister that is the daughter of Darkseid, and she's going to kill Darkseid. And that's going to be some part of the next thing after Convergence, there's going to be the daughter of Darkseid trying to kill Darkseid. Convergence number zero. There's a little connection to Future's End. Not as much as I thought. And the Jeff King here is not the Tom King of Grayson that I like so much. He has never written a comic book before. This is Jeff. I think he's wrote two novels, maybe. So this is his debut. And this is the big event that's going to lead all of the... All of the universes into one. Okay? So... What you didn't know is that this is a continuation of Earth 2. Well, actually, Earth 2 to the weekly Earth 2 World's End. Now, this is when I'm going to go from noobler and beginner to advanced comic book reading. It's going to be convoluted. I'll try not to go too fast, but I'll go through fast through the issues because they're weeklies. But on convergence number zero, it sets the stage that there's a place outside of time and space. Okay, Telos is the planet. Telos will then become a being given life by Brainiac. In this one, Convergence number one, we learn that there's a battle royale. When I first read this, I was like, oh my. We've done this over, Marvel did Avengers Arena. Again, Deathmatch by Paul Jenkins. I, this, it hurt. When I read it, it hurt. So there we know that directly connected to Earth 2. Earth 2 doesn't have a world. They show up on Telos. The guy goes, hey, you don't have a world. You can't be a part of the Battle Royale. So I'm sure within the eight versions, uh, eight issues of Convergence, they're going to be part of some sort of Battle Royale, and what they're trying to do, what was billed as it was going to be, is that you have all these different storylines, whether it was uh, the World War II sort of golden era that they moved to Earth to, or whether it was the Russian Superman, or whether it was Injustice Superman, all these different things that are happening all at once, that now they're going to compete, whoever wins, wins the DC Universe. That's what it's supposed to be. Good lines about the Joker in here, and that's the finale of Thomas Wayne. You think as he does a suicide bomb. I won't. Suicide vest. I won't say anything about that. I have reserved judgment about that. And as you know, in my points of order, these means I haven't, I haven't read these. I'm holding off on these because of the two shots that they have. Um, that is supposed to be the warring of the, of the world. And I'm slowing down because I'm trying not to say what I feel about it. <laughs> so I'll just speed up and you make up your own mind. I'll read four, five, and six, but I need to get 
uh, Speed Force 2 and Justice League Society 2. And I didn't put them on my pull list, so lesson learned. Um, I didn't put them on the pull list, and they weren't available to me. It's hard for a comic book store owner to say, I have all of these freaking titles. There's only two of them. Which ones do I get? And I thought I was just going to go in and get it, but no, they're not there. So I'm waiting for it. But let's pop back to Earth 2, which I've been reading. <laughs> Note to self. I have put these here because I can't remember everything, right? Take a deep breath. Do you mind? That's what I do before auditions. Side note. Didn't get any of my editions. Did not get the Steve Jobs movie. Did not get Cannibal Rain TV series. Did not get the Visa commercial. And did not get the Green Sprinkles commercial. I'll just keep on doing these until I get better, right? Wait for that Viking role. All right, so Earth 2, five years ago, the big three died. In this one, the Beguiler is torturing Jay Garrick, who is the Flash of Earth 2. And it's freaking hilarious how he's uh, spitting back at her. This is the, a variant of The Last of Kryptonian, which is part four, which is Val Zod, which is the Black Superman. So we had, what, Green Lantern, Power Girl, and now Superman. I only say that because I'm part of three Facebook groups, and one had a very heated discussion about African-American superheroes in uh, Detective Comics, DC. And just so you know, I'm in three. Um, comic book nerds are hot. Marvel and DC Unite, and uh, your comic book community, or YCC, which used to be YouTube comic book community. All right, so Val Zod reveals himself right here. Um, and it's interesting because... You have Jimmy Olsen, totally different than normal Jimmy Olsen. He's like super, super intelligent. And uh, he is basically cussing out Batman for cussing out Val Zod for being a pacifist. To be continued in Earth 2 World's End. Okay, but there's no number and this is 31. And then, oh wait, there's another one. <laughs> we didn't button it up yet. This is the last issue. Okay, all right. Again, it's rushed, but it like just wants to go. It's almost gratuitous, like... Just so you know, we did all this. They definitely make you understand that Green Lantern here. Oh, Alan Scott. <laughs> Too many things. Alan Scott has a same-sex marriage that was going to be. You have Power Girl that has now gotten the butt boobs covered up. So no more of that. I don't know if they're hearkening the Spider Woman fiasco. But shing, the, the S went on. So no more... Uh, butt boobs anymore and then um you have the superman again the black foster child and then you have red tornado which is now lois lane a batman who is basically bruce's dad thomas who's on drugs it got so convoluted that this earth 2 was supposed to go into uh world's end all right okay in earth 2 you always knew that apocalypse came killed the big three and apparently they're coming back and lastly, I'm about to get to Future's End after I go through Earth 2 right now. But Future's End is saying, yeah, basically they died. The Earth 2 died and came over to our place. Okay? And then that was supposed to lead to Convergence. But like I just said, the Convergence that I went through has freaking nothing to do with Future's End. Pause. And actually, Convergence is the continuation of Earth 2. So then, what they did, once they saw the weekly happening uh, very well for Future's End, they went into Earth 2 World's End and made it weekly. And I'm starting at 16, which is back in March, like I said. So, and this story arc was all about the Parliament. The Parliament is like, you have the green of the Earth, you have the ocean of the Earth, you have the meat of the Earth, you have the rod of the Earth, you have the decay. That's the Parliament, and that's all based on Swamp Thing, but then they put the Green Lantern into it. And this is actually the issue that the S goes on so there's no butt boobs, okay? So this is the issue before they decided to do one last more of Earth 2. I wanted to let you know that on this one they added Cullen Bunn. Now you know I used to love Cullen Bunn until of course, just like Jeff Meyer, he does too many. He has titles across like four different publishers and all of a sudden they're like, dude, you need to save us. Last gas. The end is almost near, right? SS, where's T? Then we go, Blue is lost, the ocean is, is dead, and Batman and Huntress are looking for Ollie at Bruce's request. The avatars pull a Voltron and they all go into Green Lantern. Bun, however, moved from four to three on this, but only this issue, I guess he got downgraded after that. Um, but this is Godflesh, again by um, Daniel Wilson. 
And uh, Jimmy Olsen is very, very powerful on this earth because he merged with the mother box. Yeah, he merged with the mother box. I believe the writer says fused, but he, so he fused with the mother box. Mm -hmm. And I did read an article about um, all 26 issues were complete before the first one was out. So if you don't know like what's working and what's not, you know, so then they just sort of had to pump them out because it's weekly. So there's a pro and con of the weeklies, but this is definitely one of the cons, I would say. Um, it's the first time for all, any of these people to be involved in comics, so they chuck it to Earth 2, which actually lends to be the event that's happening now, which is Convergence. So let's try better art. Art uptick here, right? So you have Dick Grayson giving his son to Big Barda, who is like the villain. <clears throat> and then you have uh, the Fallen Fury, which is still alive. And uh, it's all very disconjunct and haphazard, and there's only two issues left. Multiple storylines are supposedly coming together. They just drop the Doctor Fate all together. It's just really all over the place. Um, if you feel differently, comment, please. Then it says continued in Convergence number one. Yeah. Continued in Convergence number one. It's... When you read it all together, like if you get it weekly, that's one thing. But when I was behind and I read it all together, maybe that's the difference. Like if you were to get the trade of it and read it all together, you're going to be going like, yeah, no, misfire. But if it happened every week, you're sort of, ah, I sort of remember that part, I sort of remember that part. So that leads into Convergence. And I showed you these Convergence ones. And that's basically about the Earth 2 guys. They lose their planet, but they're ported off to Telos, which stops time and space. And uh, they're in the Battle Royale, but they don't have their world. So they're errant, right? Telos doesn't like that. But for the other ones, there's all these two-part spinoffs. And there's sort of an equation to all of the writer. You have this dome that inhibits the time and space that these people were. And it actually harkens to the time and space of whether it was a 1940 series or it was 1970 or whatever. The dome inhibits their superpowers for one year. And it's sort of interesting to see who gets what jobs, you know? Some people don't have their powers, so they have to get certain jobs. And I swear, if you know Ren and Stimpy, there is a, a reference to that. Uh, I believe it's John Chris Fousley or Chris Chris Fousley, but there's one that there's Ren yelling at Stimpy to guard a red button. The jolly red, candy red button. You won't touch it, will you? What'll happen? That's just it. We don't know. Maybe something good. Maybe something bad. You won't touch it, will you? That's in here. I swear. I would love if that guy would call me and say, yes, you're right. The uh, Wonder Woman fights this vampire Joker, Poison, Ivy, and Catwoman. And the history pages are not so fitting on this one, but then again, I don't know the history. And that's why I'm trying to do all of these, is trying to, to get a little bit of what happened all those years that I wasn't reading, obviously. Speed Force, still can't get number two. I find it hilarious that the son and daughter, Jai and Iris, definitely different than the Iris in the TV show, obviously. The way that they are here, they're sort of following, but in the comic, they're like turning over because it's like connected to them. And the question on this one, she's different. She's a female. They say, I'm sorry about your dad. So I assume that's the other question, but she sort of wears a mask, whereas the other question I didn't think was a mask. Um, and she obviously has the same sex relationship with the Huntress. But this is Greg Rucka of Lazarus. He's very, very good. That's on image. So he did not, did not follow the equation. There's also a part that um, Two-Face keeps on flipping heads. And that reminds me of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Gary Oldman, Tim Roth, Richard Dreyfuss. Awesome movie. It's about Hamlet. But the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern that are the friends of Hamlet are only written, Shakespeare only wrote them like these very disconjunct scenes. So a playwright made it so it was in their perspective, but they like, okay, so we're talking, and then all of a sudden we're gone, but now we're over here. How, how do you explain that? Really, really good. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Excellent. Um, what? Aquaman. Everyone knows that I'm an Aquaman fan. I'm not a fan with Aquaman and the Zelda hook, okay? I don't get the Zelda hook. They sort of explain it was put to piranhas and he lost his hand because they were bitten off by piranhas, which doesn't make sense if he has his, like, you know, talk to fish thing. There's, there's free electricity and water in these domes, but um, there's, like, not a body of water, so he takes over the aquarium. He's not doing too well. Poor guy in here. 
believe it's in this, you have him fighting Vixen. And uh, Vixen can take the properties of other animals. And there's a really, really cool thing that the writer did with that. Okay? I'll just say that one. All right, this is Hawkman. Also, always been a Hawkman fan. After reading this, I sort of wanted my 10 minutes back. Booster Goal, Dan Jurgens, big uh, name. He didn't follow the equation, but I had no idea that Booster Gold was so big that he like takes care of the timeline and there's a vanishing point at the end. Um, really interesting to learn about Booster Gold. I just knew him as sort of the pompous rich guy that came back uh, in time. There's a lot that goes along with his time travel and family, etc. Crime Syndicate, that's Earth 3, so you have the opposites of everything. Superwoman would be like Wonder Woman, but she's Superwoman. And then you have Ultraman, that's Superman, obviously. Um, and I'm pretty sure she dies in here. You never know if they really die. But this is Conversion, 